Good morning and welcome to you all to the service of morning prayer on Thursday the 8th of October. It's like sunnier day than it was uh, yesterday. Um, it's good to have your company. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's blessing. God be gracious to us and bless us. And make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. And let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm for this morning is Psalm 78. O Lord, how glorious are your works! Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will pour forth mysteries from of old, such as we have heard and known, which our forebears have told us. We will not hide from their children, but we will recount to generations to come. The praises of the Lord and his power and the wonderful works he has done. He, he laid a solemn charge on Jacob and made it a law in Israel which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God, and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments, and not to be like their forebears, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The people of Ephraim, armed with the bow, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. They forgot what he had done and the wonders he had shown them. For he did marvellous things in the sight of their forebears, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and let them pass through. He made the water stand still in a heap. He led them with a cloud by day, and all the night through with a blaze of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness, and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the rock, and made water gush out like rivers. Yet for all this they sinned more against him and defied the Most High in the wilderness. They tested God in their hearts and demanded food for their craving. They spoke against God and said, Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? He struck the rock indeed, so that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. But can he give bread or provide meat for his people? When the Lord heard this, he was full of wrath. A fire was kindled against Jacob, and his anger went out against Israel. For they had no faith in God, and put no trust in his saving help. So he commanded the clouds above, and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down upon them manna to eat, and gave them the grain of heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He sent them food in plenty. 
He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and let out the south wind by his might. He rained flesh upon them as thick as dust and winged fowl like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and round about their tents. So they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they desired. But they did not stop their craving. Their food was still in their mouths. When the anger of the Lord of God rose against them and slew their strongest men and felled the flower of Israel. But for all this they sinned yet more and put no faith in his wonderful works. So he brought their days to an end like a breath and their years in sudden terror. Whenever he slew them, they would seek him. They would repent and earnestly search for God. They remembered that God was their rock, and the, God, and the Most High God their Redeemer. Yet they did but flatter him with their mouth, and dissembled with their tongue. Their heart was not steadfast towards him, neither were they faithful to his covenant. But he was so merciful that he forgave their misdeeds and did not destroy them. Many a time he turned back in his wrath and did not suffer his whole displeasure to be roused. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes by and does not return. O Lord, how glorious are your works! God our Deliverer, as you led our ancestors through the wilderness, so lead us through the wilderness of this world that we may be saved through Christ for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the second book of Kings, chapter 1, verses 2 to 17. Ahaziah had fallen through the lattice in his upper chamber in Samaria, and lay injured. So he sent messengers telling them, Go, inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this injury. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Get up, go and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore, thus says the Lord, shall not leave the bed to which you have gone, but you shall surely die. So Elijah went. The messengers returned to the king, who said to them, Why have you returned? They answered him, There came a man to meet us, who said to us, Go back to the king who sent you, and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending to inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore you shall not leave the bed to which you have gone, but shall surely die. He said to them, What sort of man was he who came to meet you and told you these things? They answered him, A hairy man with a leather belt around his waist. He said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent to him a captain of fifty with his fifty men. He went up to Elijah who was sitting on top of a hill and said to him, O man of God, the king says, Come down. But Elijah answered the captain of fifty, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again the king sent to him another captain of fifty with his fifty. He went up and said to him, O man of God, this is the king's order, come down quickly. But Elijah answered them, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again the king sent a captain of a third fifty with his fifty. So the third captain of the fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and entreated him, O man of God, please let my life and the life of these fifty servants of yours be precious in your sight. Look, fire came down from heaven and consumed the two former captains of fifty men with their fifties. But now let my life be precious in your sight. Then the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him, do not be afraid of him. So he set out and went down with him to the king, and said to him, Thus says the Lord, because you have sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, 
Is it because there is no God in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore you shall not leave the bed to which you have gone, but you shall surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord that Elijah had spoken. His brother Jehoram succeeded him as king in the second year of King Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat of Judah, because Ahaziah had no son. Here ends our first reading. Song of the Covenant I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it. He gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Our second reading, we continue to hear from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24, verses 1 to 23. Five days later, the high priest Ananias came down with some elders and an attorney, a certain Tertullus, and they reported their case against Paul to the governor. When Paul had been summoned, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Your Excellency, because of you we have long enjoyed peace and reforms have been made for this people because of your foresight. We welcome this in every way, and everywhere with utmost gratitude. But to detain you no further, I beg you to hear us briefly with your customary graciousness. We have in fact found this man a pestilent fellow, an agitator among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, and so we seized him, by examining him yourself, you'll be able to learn from him concerning everything of which we accuse him. The Jews also joined in the charge by asserting that all this was true. When the governor motioned to him to speak, Paul replied, I cheerfully make my defence, knowing that for many years you have been a judge over this nation. As you can find out, it is not more than twelve days since I went up to worship in Jerusalem. They did not find me disputing with anyone in the temple or stirring up a crowd either in the synagogues or throughout the city. Neither can they prove to you the charge that they now bring against me. But this I admit to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, I worship the God of our ancestors, believing everything laid down according to the law and written in the prophets. I have a hope in God, a hope that they themselves also accept that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. Therefore I do my best always to have a clear conscience towards God and all people. Now after some years I came to bring alms to my nation and to offer sacrifices. Whilst I was doing this they found me in the temple, completing the rite of purification without any crowd or disturbance. But there were some Jews from Asia they ought to be here before you to make an accusation, if they have anything against me. Well, let these men here tell what crime they have found when I stood before the council, unless it was this one sentence that I called out while standing before them. It is about the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you today. For Felix, who was rather well informed about the way, adjourned the meeting with the comment, My Lysias the Tribune comes down. I will decide your case. Then he ordered the centurion to keep him in custody, but to let him have some liberty and not to prevent any of his friends from taking care of his needs. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. 
through his holy prophets, God promised of old, to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. And to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. So let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day. And we pray for this day, for the work we will do, for the rest we will enjoy. We place, Lord, ourselves into your hands. And as we have been reminded in both our readings, help us always to place our trust in you for all that we have in our life, for the words we have to speak, for the things that you have called us to do, and the gifts and talents that you have given us to be able to live them out in our lives. We pray for our world a world still battling against this pandemic, and we pray, Lord, for an end to it. We pray for those countries of the world that have had high numbers of cases, who've lost lots of their people, for those who are struggling. We pray for your gift of peace to be spread across our whole world, peace that comes with an end to warfare and conflict, the peace that comes by knowing what, where your next meal will be coming from. The peace that comes from not having to travel to get clean water. The peace that comes from having education and healthcare. The peace that comes from having shelter over our heads. We pray for aid agencies and charity workers and all those who often find themselves in very difficult situations who are trying to care for the people of our world. We pray that they may be strengthened by our prayers and by the actions that we take in changing our lives, that the whole world may, may see that we are good stewards in caring for one another, for our environments and habitats. We are especially mindful of this at this harvest time. And we pray for the Friends of the Holy Land and for the work of Tear Fund and so many other charities that we could mention today who go out into the world to help others. We pray for our food banks and food larders, for those that are stocked up by our harvest gifts. Lord, we thank you that we are able to give, and we pray for those who will receive, for those who use our food larder, for those who feel anxious about doing so. We thank you that we are able to give out of our generosity, out of all that we have received from you. Today, from our prayer intention, we pray for all who feel lonely, isolated or anxious because of the pandemic. We pray especially for those who are isolated from loved ones, grandparents who long to see a grandchild, for those worried about elderly parents and relatives, and for families who are under pressure. Lord, this pandemic has swept across us and changed our lives forever. We pray for the weights and burdens that many people feel, for the responsibility that is carried, for the anxieties that are felt, and the fearfulness we sense in each other. We pray for those who have been shielding and unable to go out and about. As we come to terms with new restrictions being brought in each day, 
We pray that we would live within the guidelines to keep each other safe. We continue to pray for our schools. We pray especially for your, our young people, for their well-being and mental health, for the joy that they feel of being with their friends, but also the strangeness of school being very different. We pray for those who've been sent home and are isolating once again. We pray for those who teach and those who care for them and those who support them in their school life. We pray for our key workers. We pray for those who are able to go out to work and those who are now encouraged to work from home once again and all the changes and disruption that that brings to life. We thank you, Lord, that we have the technology to be able to do this. We pray for those who continue to be furloughed, for those who have been unable to return to work and for those who sadly have lost their employment or whose jobs are under threat at this time. We pray for the many thousands who now find themselves unemployed and uncertain about a way forward. We pray especially for our health service, for the demands now being placed upon it once again, giving thanks for all that they have to protect themselves and for the many people who are able to care for those in need. We pray for our hospitals, for those who work in them and those who find themselves in it. We pray for our hospices and the care that they give. We continue to pray for our care homes and sheltered housing, for residents and carers. We pray for those who go out into the community who provide essential care for those at home. And we continue also to pray for our GP surgeries, pharmacies and health centres, with the work that they do in these difficult times. We thank you, Lord, for all those who care for others, those who try to provide for their needs and those who try to provide them with healing. And so we bring to you, Lord, those who we know who are in need of your healing touch today. There are so many in our hearts and minds, so many we know who suffer in body, mind and spirit. And so we pray for Charlie, Wendy, Lisa, David, Morris, Margaret, Mary, Jeff, Alan, George, Chris, Charlotte, Gillian, Jean, John and Marion. We pray for them and all those that we name in the silence of our hearts today. So we pray for those who have died. We pray especially for those who have died this past night and for those who have watched and waited at their side. We pray for those who have died recently, those whose anniversaries occur at this time and those we hold in our hearts and minds. Lord, we ask for your comfort to be upon all those who mourn and carry that pain of bereavement with them, that you would give them your strength and courage today. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself, and so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Thank you for joining me for this service of morning prayer today, either live or a little bit later on as you've had opportunity to watch and to join us. There'll be a service of evening prayer at five o'clock this evening, but there will be no live stream services tomorrow. We will start again on Saturday with morning prayer after this evening's service. Do hope that you have a good day, whatever this day may be bringing you, and that you take care, stay safe and look after yourselves. And remember that you are always in my prayers.